start button here if you give it about three seconds and then you're good to go. Good evening, everyone. My name is Holly Nill. I am the principal of Cedarland School. I want to begin tonight by reading the land acknowledgement statement. The Grand Erie District School Board recognizes the Haudenosaunee and the Ashinaabe people as the traditional people of this territory. We acknowledge and give gratitude to the Indigenous people for sharing these lands in order for us to continue our work here today. So I'd like to welcome all of the families from the Cedarland community, as well as the families from the Briar Park community. I know that uh, Christina Britton, the principal of Briar Park is with us. I'm gonna invite her to say hello. Thank you, Holly. Uh, I'd like to say hi to both our Briar Park families, as well as our Cedarland families. Uh, I'm looking forward to this evening's presentation. I will be moderating the question box, so please feel free to put some questions in the Q&A, which we will answer after the presentation. So thank you very much for coming tonight. Yeah, and I just wanted to uh, just review how the uh, night is going to run. So we're going to start with a uh, slideshow presentation, um, and that's going to be followed by a question and answer period. And as Mrs. Britton has already said, she's going to be moderating that question and answer box. Uh, and then this will be followed by a survey. And I just wanted to point out that the survey will also have a sample calendar attached to it, but that is indeed just a sample calendar. So it's not uh, one that is etched in stone by, by how it would run, but a sample for you can get an idea what it might look like. Um, and so that's how our evening is gonna run. Again, thank you very much for joining us. And I'm gonna turn it over to Superintendent Wayne Baker. Thank you, Holly. Uh I'd like to echo the sentiments of the principals and welcoming everybody um, here tonight. Um, putting on this presentation was a lot of work and I certainly uh, didn't do it all. I wanted to thank Jesse Hurdle from the IT department for producing uh, this event as well as the, the two previous evenings. He's been a, a busy fella. Also, Heather Joe Cousin, my exec assistant, did a lot of leg work in preparation for this. I'd like to thank the principals of the two buildings for hosting this event, but most importantly, I'd like to um, uh, thank you folks for making time in your busy uh, lives to join us. Um, I know that there are other things we could be doing, but you chose to be here and I really appreciate that. And certainly we value uh, your presence for the input that you're going to provide. Um, the, um, as Holly said, there's a chat box. And what I wanted to point out is that um, when uh, we get to the, to the point of answering questions later on, uh, the, um, not every question will be at, will be asked that is registered because some of them will be repeats and we don't want to answer the same question a whole bunch of times. However, all of those uh, questions are going to be recorded and that's why we're asking you to use that chat box because all of those questions are going to be passed on to the um, balance to your committee for their consideration uh, later on and you'll hear about the committee in just a bit. Um, the uh, recording that we're going to make of the event tonight can be used by parents who aren't here and also for you to go back and to check an answer to a specific question that you might not uh, might not have remembered. So hopefully um, that will be a, a service to you as well. So Jesse, let's have a look at um, that first slide. So um, why are we here tonight? So. First, uh, the, first of all, the trustees approved a pilot project for the for the upcoming school year 2022-23 that's going to use the balanced year calendar. Now, the balanced year calendar is known by by other names. Sometimes you'll see a modified school year. Sometimes you'll hear year round schooling. We didn't particularly like those other terms, so we we chose as a committee to to call this. The, the balanced year calendar, we think it's it's the most indicative. Now the calendar isn't totally balanced, but it's more balanced um, than the others. So the uh, second bullet is uh, about why we're here is that, that the pilot's going to occur uh, in one Brantford Elementary School. Um, that was one of the criteria that the uh, trustees established, and it could be the school that uh, your children attend. So that's why we've invited uh, you as well. You're going to learn what those nine schools are shortly, but you, your school would be one of them. 
Um, also, you'll notice that there are two school communities here and not one. So school communities have been paired in one case tripled with another school because whatever school gets chosen has to have a school that's reasonably close by. So the pilot school is going to have a partner school close enough that if there's anybody who's at that pilot school that doesn't really want to remain there, doesn't fit their, their style, um, there's a place to go. Likewise, there's a school close by to fill up any openings that might exist at the pilot school. So that's why we've paired them. But most importantly, and it's not accidental that this line is bolded, the reason we're here tonight is to get your feedback on this particular pilot. What you choose, your opinion on this pilot is, is important. But even more important than the, than the uh, opinion that they hold is the fact that you share it with us. What we want to be able to do is to provide the very, very fullest information to the trustees so that they can make the best decision to support the school communities uh, of Grand Erie. Now, one of the things I probably should do is to point out some, some roles here. So when we talk about trustees, those are the 11 people that are elected and legislatively have the right and the responsibility to make decisions. You're also going to hear um, uh, reference to this committee. You already heard it. So the balanced year committee is was formed to, to gather information to pass on to the trustees. They can make recommendations, they can make suggestions, but they have no decision making authority. That rests entirely with the trustees. My role as superintendent in this particular situation, because I have responsibility in the board for, for helping develop the, the regular calendar, my responsibility is to simply chair that committee. Likewise, I have no decision making authority in this project whatsoever. It rests entirely with the trustees. Next, Jesse. So what is the balanced year? So it's a school year that starts in August instead of September. Arguably, it's about a month earlier than the, than the normal um, school year. And the, the days that are normally holidays, let's use the number 20, normally holidays in August are spread out through through uh, out the year to make up those 20 days. Because there has to be the same number of days in the calendar, we can't have a longer one. So in all other respects, except for the start time, in all other respects, the balanced year calendar is identical is identical to the traditional one. It has the same number of school days, both calendars, 194. Both calendars have the same number of PA days, that's seven. The PA, those seven PA days will be on exactly the same day for both school year calendars. They have the same statutory holidays. They use the same report card. They have the same length of school day. It's 300 instructional minutes. And also um, they will attend the same sporting events uh, regardless of which calendar a, a particular school um, uses. So the balanced year calendar itself, or I should say a balanced year, um, is used throughout the year, uh, throughout the world, it's used throughout North America and it's used in various places in Canada. In some places around the world, they've never used a calendar that looks like ours. They've never, they've never had a calendar where two months um, are taken out of the school year. They've ha they've always had a different kind of calendar, very similar to the one that you're going to see. In North America and in Canada, places have ended up using a balanced calendar because they've changed from that traditional calendar that we've known um, for probably 150 years. Now in Ontario, the balanced year calendar has been used for about 25 years. And at last count, it was used in 29 of the school boards um, in Ontario. I think that's probably it for right now. Um, next slide, please. So the, um, the balanced year calendar is not for everyone. That It's important right off the bat to note that. So for different reasons, the school year, the, the uh, balanced school year will not fit the preferences for some people in the pilot school. It just isn't the way that, that well, they simply can't make it work. It doesn't fit their lifestyle. So some folks have told us and told 
predecessor boards who use this model, that those August holidays are really important. That's our lifestyle. We go to the cottage. Our kids are involved in, in sports programs. They might also say that they don't want their kids' schedules to be different than their friends. If they move, if they if they have this calendar, then their friend schedules are different. Those are all really valid concerns. We've heard them and they've been voiced in other jurisdictions that use the balance year calendar as well. Most importantly, probably, is that the community activities align with the traditional calendar. So for the last um, 150, 170 years, for as long as there's been an education system in Ontario, we've used this agrarian model where the summers are off. If you mention summer vacation to anybody out in the community, they know what you mean. They mean July and August off. So it's a very difficult thing for some folks to get their head around. Got to acknowledge that, we really do. The last bullet's an important one. So if at that pilot school, there are students or teachers or administrators who just can't make this work in their lives, they're going to have the option of going to another school. No one's going to be forced to, to attend a school with this calendar if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't fit for them. Now, to, to sort of establish the fact that it's not for everyone, we said that there are 29 boards at last count that have some form of, of a balanced day uh, calendar. In those boards, only a few schools use the balanced year calendar. There is no school board in Ontario that has all of their schools using the balanced year calendar. There was a, a rumor circulating that um, if this pilot were to work and be successful, that all of the schools in Grand Erie would move to the balanced year calendar. And while I can't speak for the trustees because that would be their decision, I can assure you that is not in the cards that all the schools in Grand Erie will not be going to the balanced year calendar. So I thought I would clear that up because that uh, that uh, that question has uh, has arisen. Next slide, please. So while it's not uh, good for some folks, it's really desirable for others. So for different reason, different reasons, the balanced year calendar might fit the preferences of folks who aren't at the pilot school. And um, the reason that uh, the balanced year calendar is uh, desirable in many ways stems from some of the research that's done around summer learning loss. Summer learning loss is the notion that when you're away from school for a while, you kind of get out of the habits and those skills that you had in June may um, be reduced a little bit by the time you come back in the summer. So by reducing the number of weeks that students are away from school in the summer, from nine to five approximately, we reduce the length of time away and therefore reduce the learning loss. It's especially true in areas of language and math. It's especially true for newcomers who are learning um, the language. It's especially true for students with academic needs and students who come from environments that might be might, might not be rich in language and literature. Reports say that students remember the, the school routines better by, uh, because they're not away quite so long. So the first month of the school year doesn't have to be spent devoted to reestablishing routines. So we've got a couple of principals here who are also classroom teachers, just like I was, and they can tell you that um, when you come back from the summer, a lot of time is spent reminding people what we do in this building and, and trying to get their learning levels back up to where they were in June. So that one of the benefits then is that reduction in the summer learning loss and remembering routines, rules, etc. It's been reported that that the balanced year calendar offers a less stressful school environment. The way that the one principal explained it to us was that throughout the year, it's just one week shorter time between major breaks in the year. Again, teachers will tell you that there are times as as um, holidays approach where it feels like they're hanging on by their fingernails. The kids are agitated. They need a break. The teachers think they need a break. Staff and, and administrators have reported um, to us 
that that stress that stress seems to be reduced in in that kind of environment. They tell us that there's more parent involvement. Now that could be for a bunch of reasons, maybe just because people choose to be in that school. It's not the one they had to go that they chose to be there. We're not really sure, but that was an observation that was made. So the last bullet on that slide is important in that if there are people, uh, staff, students, administrators who are at that partner school, that school that's close by to the one that's going to be um, where the where the pilot is going to be established. If there are folks there that want to attend the pilot school and there are some openings, there would be room to move those folks over to the pilot school, just like they're go there's going to be an opportunity to move from the pilot school to the partner school if it doesn't work for you. Um, there are, th th in all likelihood, there could be wait lists of people to get into uh, the balance program uh, in Peel, the three schools they have historically have had wait lists of students who, who wanted to get in and actually staff members who wanted to work there according to the people uh, in that building. So um, I think that's all for that slide. Jesse, do you want to move it to the next one? So from the time that the trustees decided that this would this pilot would be established to right now, what's going on? So this, as I mentioned, the, there was a committee form whose job it was to gather as much information as possible. So the people did some reading and we looked at, at some of the research. We looked at reports in, in the board. But more importantly, what we really thought would be useful would be to invite some folks who actually have some lived experience with the balanced year. So rather than just talking about it and reading about it, we thought we would listen to people who, who actually um, lived in that kind of environment. Um, we spent a lot of time talking with folks from Peel. We talked to other people, but we talked to a lot to the people from Peel because we believe they were the first board in Ontario to introduce, introduce the notion of a balanced day um, back in, the, in, I think, the mid-90s. Mid and um, so we, we ended up talking with several different levels of, uh, of employee uh, uh, in that board. We talked to a superintendent, we talked to teachers, we talked to a principal, we talked to some parents from, from schools that had the, the balanced year calendar. And after talking to these um, people, what we thought would be really important would be to share that information with people who might potentially be affected if this decision was made to, to incorporate this pilot. And so what we did was to organize three information sessions. So we had an information session for the administrators of the schools that could potentially be the host site. And at that point, there were about 15 schools. And so those principals joined us in a, in a session with a principal from Peel who works at a balanced year school and has worked in a, a traditional calendared school. And they were, they were able to ask some questions and hear about that person's ex experience from the perspective of a principal. Then we invited staff members. Uh, they were mostly teachers, but they were educational assistants, ECEs as well. We invited staff to join us for a similar meeting, but at that one, we invited a teacher who worked at a balanced year school and who had also worked at a traditional calendared school. And that person shared um, experiences with the group and answered questions from the staff. And finally, we had a parent session. So we invited parents to come in and hear what other parents had to say. So we invited the principal of the, of uh, Tony Pontus School in Peel. Uh, we invited that person and we invited her to um, um, have some parents accompany her. So we had about a half dozen parents from Tony Pontus School and they had varying experiences with the balanced year calendar. Some of them were brand new to it, hadn't had only basically less than a year experience with it. Other people had children who had spent their entire career in a, in a school with a, a balanced year calendar. So parents were able to ask some questions and hear the stories of these folks. And after that uh, parent session, we um, offered up a survey for parents. And the survey was pretty simple and I'll paraphrase but these were these were the questions. So the first question said, if that pilot 
for the balanced year comes into your school, will you stay or will you want to go? The second question said, if that pilot is in a school other than yours, would you ask to go there or not? And the third question was, tell us what you think in, in, in just your own words. And so we took that parent survey, the results from it, had the um, system research lead collate the results and then hand them off to the committee that's working. And the responses help the committee shortlist that number of schools down to the number that we're looking at today. So we went from about 15 down to down to nine based on on that first go at the survey, as well as some other information um, that we had. Next slide, please. So these are the recommended option that the that the committee is considering right now. And there was a, a very interesting question asked, so I should offer clarification. These options are in no order of priority. There is no significance to the way they're ordered, top to bottom, one to four. There is no significance about which school in those groupings is first or second. They, those are simply the schools that the committee felt would be appropriate to group together based on the, the selection criteria that had been established. So um, what's going to happen? Well, actually, we can go to the next slide and I can I can look at it there. So what's going to happen next is um, after the, the town hall that we have for each of those groupings, so we, we this is the third out of four. We've got one more to do. Um, we're going to survey each of the school communities. So your survey link will be sent to you by the principal tomorrow. And I'll, and I'll say it again, what we're looking for is maximum response rates. Again, what, what you choose is, is really important, especially to you. More important to us is that you tell us what you think in order that the trustees have the very best information upon which to make their decisions. Imagine if we had 100% response rate from a school and they said they were 100% either in favor or against something, that's really powerful. That's a pretty clear message to the principal. Now it's never going to be that, or sorry to the trustees, it's never going to be that slick. Um, but the closer we can get to 100% participation, the better the trustees can trust the, the favorability rating that every school is going to get. And all the favorability rating refers to is the, the percentage of people who think it's a good idea because the direction was to look for a place to implement it. So we're looking for places that that have a high favorability rate. So um, after that survey is taken, um, the results are going to go back to the committee. The committee is going to meet a couple of times uh, over the next uh, month. And then on November the 8th, the report's going to go to the trustees. That report is going to have some recommendations, some suggestions, some best thinking of that committee. But again, that committee has no decision making authority. The trustees have no obligation to agree with the recommendations that are made by the committee. They'll, they'll do their best decision making based on the conversation that they have and their own personal thoughts. And by the way, trustees have been listening in to the various presentations, so they know what people what people are saying and they're going to know in totality what what parents have said too. Now after November the 8th, depending on what the trustees decide, we'll put plans in place to do whatever has to be done based on the decisions that are made. Next slide, please. So at this point, um, we are going to have the moderator read questions. We are not going to read duplicate questions, but as I said, the duplicate questions will be uh, recorded. We want we want the trust. Uh, sorry, we want the committee members to know if 27 people thought this was an issue we should be looking at, even though we are only going to ask the question once tonight. We want the committee to know that 27 people commented on it in order that it doesn't look equally as important to an issue 
where only one person ever asked about it. We want to really get the, the, the breadth of the concerns for parents. So at this point, I guess I'll turn it over to the moderator to ask the questions. OK, thank you, Wayne. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, the question. And again, I'm, I'm really just paraphrasing a lot of the questions um, because some people have asked a very similar, like have asked the question very similarly. So the first question that is a, a big concern for families is the before and after school care. So right now at Cedarland, they do not have before and after school care where we do at Briar Park. Um, so they're just wondering like if say Cedarland was to be chosen for the pilot program uh, for the balanced school year, would there be efforts made to have the before and after school program? Um, and then again, because the breaks are at different times than the traditional school year, would there be some efforts from the school board to have some childcare during those break times because a lot of the community and the summer programs and the day camps aren't running at those times. OK, good question. And 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 just so you know, a popular one, this will be this will be uh, a very important part of the conversations around the, the committee. The, the basic philosophy that the committee has is that nobody should get a lesser degree of service because the, the balanced year calendar might be in their school. So the answer to the question, would we be looking, would we be looking into um, daycare situations? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, if, would we be looking into before and after care situations? Yes. So as soon as the trustees have made a decision, that becomes one of the things that we have to act on. What we're hoping for is that before we ask for a commitment by parents, about what they want to do, we will we will be able to have answers to some of the questions in order that the decision would be easier for you to make. Quite clearly, there are going to be things that you want to consider in your particular family. Might not be the same as somebody else's family, but we want to make sure that um, the issues around childcare can be uh, can be ironed out to the best way that we can. And these are our partners, and we're hoping to uh, get traction on support for those other times uh, outside the regular uh, times. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized I should have muted my mic. OK, the next uh, most popular question was the, uh, families are concerned about um, a guarantee. So if they choose to go to the traditional school year rather than the balanced school year, will they have a guarantee that they would get into the other school? Would there be wait lists? Uh, what happens if we have in one school, it's really um, we have a large population, so therefore we have portables and that but then at the other school, there are smaller classes. All right, so so I'll frame it this way. So um, we, we will be balancing the numbers. So if you think of the pilot school, the first question that we're going to ask people in that building is, do you want to stay or go? So let's imagine that there are, uh, I, I'll pick a number just off the, let's say there are 50 students who, who don't want to be there. So those 50 students, will have an opportunity to go to the partner school as well as offering up the opportunity to come back. So somebody last night asked, well, what if you get a whole bunch of people that want to go to this to this new pilots to this new pilot program? It's going to be too crowded. And just like you said, they're going to be portables. It won't happen. We still have to honor the uh, class size limits that the ministry imposes. We have class size averages for junior and intermediate board wide. We have individual class sizes, class size limits in, in primary. So we would have to match up any openings, uh, sorry, anybody that wanted to get into the pilot school with the openings that are available. Likewise, the movement, the movement the other way. So in short, there won't be one school with with portables and and you know fill, filled to the rafters and the other one half empty. No, that won't happen. OK, thank you. Uh, so the next most popular question is about transportation. Uh, so basically, if the home school is selected for the balance year, but the families are opting to go to the traditional school, will busing be provided for them? Yes. All right, thank you. I'm trying to do it as most popular to least popular. Uh, next question, 
will there be supports for students with learning exceptionalities, particularly because uh, during August, many of the support staff are off? Yes, the, the school-based staff will be the same as they would have been um, uh, in any other school. And so this question came up and the committee, the committee members asked the folks from Peel how this worked. The reason the questions originated is because we have all of the unions represented. And what we were told is that there were some staff who were willing to provide those services in a, on a sort of a loo time basis. So if we put a certain amount of time in, it gets paid back. Um, the unions, I'm, I'm pretty sure, will be will be OK with with working that kind of arrangement out. However, there was another benefit that the principal pointed out. It was absolutely unexpected and, and really worked to their benefit. So many of our supports come from community agencies. In August, that school is going to be the only game in town. And what they found was it was really easy to get community supports to come in because there was no waiting list where they had to wait for them to go to the other three or four schools first. And so that was an unexpected benefit. So I think that that would uh, also hold true uh, uh, in our area. OK, uh, next question is about sur the survey. Will um, all families be able to complete the survey that uh, Mrs. Nill and I send out tomorrow, even if they weren't at tonight's meeting? Absolutely. So when that link gets sent out, it's going to get sent out to to parent. Well, it, it, it's going to get sent out for parents who weren't here tonight um, as well. Um, there were two two interesting points that came out of, of the conversation last night. One was we have some people I, I'm not sure, but I would imagine both principals have students who are currently in virtual learning and actually tied to other schools. We are going to make a point of, of getting that information to them in order that those families can fill it out as well. And we also are going to provide a, li a, a, a paper copy to anybody who doesn't have online connectivity. So we, we want everybody, as I said, we want to maximize it and, uh, response and we're, we're going to go to, uh, to all corners to find them. Uh, so I'm going to combine a few here for the next question. Um, so what people are wondering is that um, could we in like a suggestion was for the balanced school year project to be at a school like a newly built school rather than a school that's already here um, and then what about like summer school and is there an, a thought about uh, a secondary school pilot okay so those are two di really different ones let me do the first one the, the first one first because um, this is critically important. So um, I can I can tell you that this conversation has already happened at the school, uh, at, sorry, at the uh, committee level. Um, one of the challenges that we have that most other boards have not had is that they instituted the balanced year calendar in an exit, uh, sorry, in a brand new school. So just as the questioner asked, wouldn't it be easier? Absolutely, positively easier. Now, here's the complication. The directive that we had as a committee was to establish this pilot in the 22-23 school year. It might be that the committee could recommend that given the response rates not being all that favorable, Maybe we should consider waiting till the new school opens. Now I can't, I can't guarantee what the committee will recommend. I can guarantee you that they're all, all members are perfectly aware of this issue. And even if we recommend it, I, I can't guarantee what the trustees will do with it. But what I do know is that they're going to take into account all the information we present to them, and we will be presenting. Um, all the questions that get asked, how many people said, hey, what about that? And here are our thoughts about uh, about that as a committee. So that's a very important part of the consideration. And I will absolutely assure you that will be front and center of the conversations that we have. I believe the second part of the question said, what about a secondary school? OK, so um, a couple of years ago, we actually 
um, had a group of people kind of knocking around the uh, this idea when it was first um, suggested by a Brantford principal. So we got a group together and we were talking about it and, and um, we decided that if we were going to try this as a pilot, we wanted to try it in a setting that was that was probably going to be the easiest to manage. And after much conversation, we thought that the secondary school had way more moving parts and that we would that we would try it in an elementary school first um, and not and not a secondary school. Now, having said that, there are boards of education that run it in elementary and secondary. There are boards that only run it in secondary. Now, why they would have landed there, I don't know, but they do. So this is a program that can be, this is a calendar that can be used in the secondary school, but it is not part of the conversation right now. This pilot is only to do with the one elementary school. Okay, uh, next question is about sports. So a timeline for sports given the um, different calendars. So uh, the, the school, the students will attend, uh, will participate in the same tournaments. Yes. And uh, it, 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 at the, the, the students on the balance year calendar will participate in, in the, the same tournaments as the other students. What we do is we schedule at times when nobody's on vacation. So it takes a little bit of effort, but we talk to the people in Peel. And I have to tell you, it was actually kind of funny because the teacher that we had uh, presenting to staff who works at a balanced year calendar school said he loves the first sport of the year because his school has had an extra month of practice and <laughs> and I thought how mercenary but apparently apparently that's true so um, they will participate with everybody else we won't have anybody losing opportunities uh, because they're at the balanced year calendar um will people have an opportunity to learn uh, what trustees they can contact if they would like to give a greater response uh, more sure. so than the survey sure well everybody has everybody has a trustee and so there are four Brantford trustees uh information can be shared with them at any time also delegations can be made to the trustees if if anybody wanted to talk to everybody at once um, so there are lots of opportunities and that is a natural um, way to uh, to get your thoughts known. Uh, will the survey results be made public? Yes. All right. Um, I'm just again, it's going back to childcare. I probably should have put it in with the other question. We have people where their older children are in high school and so they are looking after the younger children and then if those kids are at the balance school year so when we talked when we talked about talked to the folks in peel about those challenges they acknowledged that at some point it becomes a parental decision does this fit our our particular circumstances there will be people that just can't make it work because there's a whole bunch of reasons um, based on their personal circumstances so again it's going to come down to individual parent choice in in uh, in those situations but yes that 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 can that can be an issue. Yes. OK, so one of the questions that was asked early was about educational research, which you covered in the slides. So I'm going to move forward from that one. Another um, comment question was, you know, have we given consideration to the fact that the kids have been through or are going through the pandemic that we have students from grade two and younger that have not had a regular school year yet? Really glad this one got asked. Um, so I'll answer it this way. Um, even during challenging times, um, you know, labor action or or pandemic. I mean, let's face it, nothing compares to the pandemic, but during challenging times, especially during the pandemic, we still have we still have work that we have to do. We still have directives that are that are passed on. Having said that, there's no possible way we cannot take into consideration the incredible circumstances and the impact on our kids with respect to mental health, the loss of opportunities to socialize, to, to, to play games, to play music, to do all of those things. There's no possible way we cannot take that into consideration. I can assure you that the committee members 
have already talked about the impact on our folks and should we be should we be um, is this the right time? So from a committee perspective, we have our directive, which is to to um, look for the implementation during the 22 23 school year. We also have the obligation to make recommendations about what we think. I can assure you one of the recommendations will be an answer to that very question. This is probably the number one question that has come up over the course of these three um, uh, town hall meetings, and it will be very, it will figure very prominently in um, the, de 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 the deliberations and the recommendations that that committee makes uh, in sending their report to the trustees. Um, so the next question, and again, I'm combining a couple here, is sort of like, let's say we do the one year balanced school year pilot project, you know, then what? So would the school yep. go back to traditional year? Would it just continue? Would it then maybe be transferred to another school? OK, so I'll back up a little bit and, and tell you that when Peel started their project back in the 90s, they established a three year pilot. So they decided that they would give it a shot for three years. And let's face it, the longer the longer you try something, the, the more the more clear the bugs become and the benefits become. But in this particular case, we're looking we're looking at at one year. But regardless of the length of time of a pilot, as you've mentioned, at, at the end of it, we've got to figure out what we're going to do next. So in Peel's case, they looked they looked at the success of it, judged the success of it, balanced off you know, the warts with the benefits and decided that they were going to implement this as a regular part of, of their calendar planning. So right now, if you go on Peel's website, and I know it's there because I just I checked the other day, you're going to see the regular school year calendar, and you're also going to see a balanced year calendar that's used in those those few schools that have the balanced year calendar. So they've already accepted that this is part of the way that they do business. Our trustees are going to have to make a similar decision. They're going to have to say, um, do we want to keep, do we want to try this for another year at the same place? Or did we really not like it? And I don't think this worked. I'm listening to the parents and, and you know, everybody, everybody thinks it's not a good idea. They may just um, uh, do away with it. I don't know what I, I, I can't speak for what the trustees um, might decide, but I can tell you that that it's going to hinge on how well it how well it did. So if it was a just a bad idea and no one likes it, I'm pretty sure there's a good chance that it that it, it would go by the wayside. If it proves favorable, then I think the trustees have to decide if maybe it goes for another year or it's it's implemented. Um, Permanently, I should tell you there is no conversation at this point about about plans to broaden it to more schools. I would suspect that after the initial pilot, we would respond to communities that said, "Hey, you know something? I've talked to some people; they really like it. How about it? How about having this at our school?" Now, having said that, that might, might, that might sound unusual, and you know, there's no chance of that. I should probably tell you how we first why we first considered this. So there's a there's a principal in Brantford who had lived in a country where they use something akin to the balanced year calendar and had seen the benefits relative to what her staff said, like, boy, this the behavior around November after, you know, is so bad, um, uh, you know, the, the just before the holidays and and they and she actually did a study and looked at suspensions and absenteeism and all that stuff. And so that request you know, came our way. But also in preparation to to sort of sharing information, she actually went to the community and talked about it. And that community was apparently pretty significantly in favor of giving it a try. So likewise, there might be there might be schools in the future that say, hey, what about us? In which case, maybe there would be consideration for broadening it by one school. But at this point, there are no plans to broaden it. It will this this pilot sort of stands on its own until somebody says we're going to do something different with it. 
OK, uh, so next question is about facilities. Um, so Briar Park is air conditioned. I don't know what the state of Cedarland is. So just um, is that a consideration, the air conditioning? And at Briar Park, there had been talk about proposed um, room construction, so the walls to be constructed, and would that impact the balance school year? Well, I can't speak to I can't speak to construction, so I um, you know, it, it gets done as it gets done. So whether there was a balanced year or a regular, you know, construction is done as it has to be. But I should tell you that um, uh, one of the criteria that the, the, the committee established for, for selecting a potential site was the fact that we wanted a significant amount of the building air conditioned at, at least 50%. In many cases, the percentage of the floor space air condition is much, much higher. In fact, some cases 100%. But we didn't want school going on in August um, without some air conditioning. Um, having said that, uh, June and September can be darn hot too. Um, granted, likely not as many 30 plus days as in August. So air conditioning was a really important part of the consideration. Okay. Cedarland uh, does have air conditioning as well. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, so this next question is, um, the link that has been sent out to the other schools regarding the survey um, is being passed around. I'm just reading this. So um, are you aware that by allowing someone to vote numerous times, it could skew the results or flawed? They would be flawed. I was talking to the system researcher about that, and we haven't finished our okay. conversations about it. Okay. So what happens to the scenario here? What happens if the parents just say, nope, uh, we don't want it? What will the trustees do? If if you were, if, I, if uh, I'll presume that the questioner means if, if nobody in a particular school wants it? Yeah, it, if a large amount of parents decide against it, so. OK, so I'll answer two different ways. If if um, a particular school had a very low favorability rate. I would I would be hard pressed to believe that the trustees would think it would be a good idea to put it there or the committee for that matter. If nobody thought that it was a good idea, then I guess the committee would have to look long and hard about the recommendations that they would make about this project. What I should tell you is that one of the criteria by which we shortlisted was the favorability rate. So um, with one exception, the favorability rates were more than 50% for everybody that's considered here uh, as a potential site. The trouble was the response rates weren't high. So let's imagine that a school community on that early parent survey was 100% in favor, uh, had 100% favorability rate. In other words, of the people that answered, 100% thought it was a great idea. That's kind of misleading if only 10% of the school community would have answered. So what we really want to do is to maximize the response rates in order that those favorability rates uh, are more indicative of, uh, of, of the feelings of the community. Uh, next question, have you consulted or had information information sessions for teachers of the shortlisted school? Um, we had we had one session, yes, where we invited where we invited staff. Um, we've um, in consultation with um, uh, ETFO, which is the, the biggest um, consideration here. Most of the employees in a building are teachers. Uh, in consultation with them, we've decided that the next time that we speak with them as a group, we will speak to the group that's directly affected as opposed to potentially causing um, angst uh, in a group of people that, that needn't be um, experiencing that. So we have had one. We will have another for sure. In fact, in in terms of the the site that's potentially chosen, there will be lots of work done with that staff in many respects. 
OK, another question that came up a few times is what happens if you um, elect to go to the balanced school year? Um, your child goes to that school, be it Briar Park or Cedarland, or um, can you change your mind mid year? Um, well, the, the, the short answer is we have we have a mechanism that we use right now for people who want to go to a different building and we call it the out of attendance area policy. I think it's SO 121 for those of for those administrators who might have used it. Um, and all that means, all that policy says in, in, in essence is that if there's room in a building for a student, it's at the discretion of the principal um, to accept that. So if, if a, a parent said to um, Principal Nil, um, you know, we, we tried, we gave that a try, we're not sure, can we, can we come back to your building um, or can we come to your building even if they hadn't been there before? She would say, um, you know, I have room for a grade four student. I think we can make that work. Or she might say, I'm sorry, um, we're already at the maximum for that grade three class. I, I can't do it right now. And so we have that policy. So the short answer is if there's room, it would be no different than any other request that comes the way of the principal. Yes, it could happen, yes. Okay, I'm just reading through. Uh, we've answered many of the questions. We're at 148 questions. I like that. Um, I think there's a couple people here looking for information about like say after you have the balanced school year and the positive contributions that it makes to the community then be more than anecdotal yeah wondering how the kids feel about it oh this is another one coterminous board considering a pilot like this uh, not at this point. We haven't had those conversations. Um, it's hard to have those conversations if you haven't made your own decision. So uh, when we have landed on a place, then we can we can sort of follow up with that. But uh, on the surface of it, that hasn't been an, uh, a conversation that's happened. No. OK, so another question here is. Um, why is the committee trusting the survey since it can be taken numerous times? But I think you're looking into that, right? You said that yeah. you were talking to the systems. Yeah, we could we can there. There are different options. Um, it can be reissued it, with uh, with 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 individual ID. Uh, we didn't um, uh, that wasn't the suggestion early on, um, but uh, that's certainly if that if that it, it is obviously an issue, then we can control that. How would you define the success of the pilot program? That's a really good question. So there are different ways that that we look at at any kind of success. So if we're looking at, at the academics, um, we can we can look at how a kid his a child has historically done. It's it's hard to compare. You know this year to next year um, if one of the years is is the kind of year that we've had. So we can still do that because learning went on, but we'd have to do it with an asterisk because it wasn't exactly the same. We can also look at how a kid has done historically. And so if we've got somebody who historically, this student is sort of a, a level three student, a B student, and we move into the balanced year uh, calendar school and the student gets a C, sort of becomes a C student or becomes an A student, we can make we can make some judgments as to how it suited that particular person. And if we add up how it suited all those individual folks, we can decide how it suits students in, in general. We also, if we had to, um, could use some kind of standardized test. That's probably not something we would do. The other part, though, is the benefit that it has not just with academics. So we're talking about 
um, a less stressful environment. We're talking about you know claims that attendance uh, improves. So there are some different measures to to talk about those things outside of academics. Now frequently those are are anecdotal as opposed to hard quantitative data, and we will only have one year. So I think a lot of it might hinge on the feedback that we get from parents and students as to how it worked. So let's ask the kids. What'd you think? Why'd you like it? Why didn't you like it? We asked the parents the same question. So in that way, the success of the program is going to is going to be to some degree in the eyes of the folks who are living it, parents and students and staff. What is the percentage that you need to approve or support uh, for it to proceed? There is no there is no uh, number. Um, so if we had uh, two schools with um, identical numbers, we would have to make a decision as to which one might be preferable. Um, but there is no there is no number that's uh, that at which point we say um, that's the one we choose or because it was above a certain level. As, as I mentioned, the favorability rates uh, with all but one school here were above 50 percent. So um, that that in and in and of itself doesn't answer the question where we would put the pilot. It's really just a number until you put it in context compared to other numbers. Uh, sorry, other schools numbers compared to um, uh, uh, the numbers. Uh, with a uh, with a different participation rate, so 50% well, let's use 60. So 60 percent of the students of a uh, uh, of a community are favorable. In other words, a 60 percent favorability rate where you've had 100 percent of the people respond. Is different than 60 percent favorability rate if only 50 percent have responded that in that second case, it's a little less clear. So the it's not just the numbers and there is no there is no number. We would look for um, a pretty significant number though if the numbers were were um, below 50 we would we would start to wonder okay uh has the school board um so what happens if all four groups so all the different the four schools if you have a negative or people don't want to support the pilot program what would then happen well i answered that one sort of earlier and that would and and if that's the case the the, the committee is going to have to look at what kind of recommendations they would make. Um, I mean, there are lots of recommendations. If we were to say which of those four options do you want, there's a possibility we'd say we don't think any of them are going to work. Okay. So this one come, has come up a few times too. Do we get to know which teachers are leaving before we decide? <laughs> um, I don't I, I'm not trying to avoid the question. It's not it's not one that we've considered and and I don't know that we can necessarily have that information because we have staffing timelines um, where people who want to move um, uh, you know declare that they want to move. It might be that we use a slightly different timeline in this special situation. But that hasn't been established yet, so I, I really can't answer that. I know what you're saying. Um, if if the if your teacher if the teacher your kid was really looking forward to is moving to a new school, um, may, maybe I want to too. I I you know there are lots of considerations like that. I just don't think you're you're going to have that information necessarily. OK, another question. So let's say um, Briar Park is the school that's chosen for the balanced school year. Um, student from Cedar Lane comes over to the balanced school year pilot, but then the pilot is done. The next year they would return to Cedar Lane, their home school. So we have, um, it, it's it's a if you want to use a comparison, um, there was a question about what we would do if somebody went into virtual learning and when they when they returned, could they return to the program that that they were in? And, it, and the answer was yes. It would be the feeling of 
the committee that nobody should be disadvantaged by participating in this pilot. So extending that thinking would mean that if somebody left because of the, the balanced year calendar, we would expect that if they return to normal, those folks would have a place back in that building. That's the thinking of the committee at this point. Um, I, I don't have any reason to doubt that that would be that that would continue to be the case. OK, um, and I think you've already answered this, but just it is at the end here. Um, there will not be a waiting list, right? So like siblings would both be attending the same school. There's no wait list. You said that in the very beginning, right? Um, a wait list in what in what context? Well, it just is if there was a waiting list for a particular school, would would you ensure siblings attend the same school? But I think you said in the beginning we wouldn't have wait lists, right? Well, the opening the openings are the opening. OK, so uh, all right, anyway, well, let's 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 have a scenario. So let's imagine that the pilot school, um, a family wants to move to the pilot school. They, they like the idea of the balanced year calendar and um so so there there is an opening for one of their students one of their children and not for the other uh we would do our best to accommodate just like principals do right now might it be the situation where there wouldn't be room for both there's always that possibility yes and again that would become a parental choice do you want one of your students do you want one of your children attending um uh, and not the other, or would you want them in the same building? In that particular uh, case, Christina, there would in fact be a wait list because what we would say to that family is at the first opportunity, if there is an opportunity, we'll we will put somebody, we will find a spot for, for your child if, if an opening comes up. Okay. Um, timeline for families to receive the survey results. Um, I would say I would say as soon as possible. I have to look into that glitch that was identified earlier to find okay. to find the extent of of the issue. Um, but you will have the results um, as as soon basically as soon as as we can share them. So one person the asking, question was going to be when will we know which school? Um, so one person is asking about the demo demographic question. If you could just type that in. What about the demographic question? Somebody has they've asked me to ask the question. Um, OK, so a comment here is about um, so you are disadvantaging students when you are breaking up cohorts of established friendships. I'm going to assume because people are going to either balance school or yep. traditional school. Well, it, it that would be based on the, the parental choices. So if uh, if a if a parent, one parent wanted to either either leave the balanced year calendar school or go to the balanced year calendar school, there would be those situ you know there would be the situation where they may be separated from their friends not too different though than when somebody um, requests to go to a different school based on an out of attendance area request we get them all the time so when those school those children move to a new school they are leaving behind the you know the people that um, they would have been classmates with so there would be some dislocation you know is it more than normally happens Maybe I, I don't know, but but yes, that would be an issue for sure. OK. So that looks to be the end of the questions. We have one here, but I'm not really following through with it, so maybe if that person could just email either Holly or myself and then we can pass that along. OK. So if we reach the end of the questions, um, as I mentioned, that inf this information is going to be shared uh, you know, with the committee. Um, 
the questions that, that you've asked are are valuable and because they indicate the concern um, the issues that are of concern for you so even though the questions weren't repeated a whole bunch of times their true significance will be shared with the committee i want to thank everybody for coming how many questions did we end up up with uh christina uh 187 very impressive shows the degree of uh of engagement uh, i'm i'm I, I think it's a tribute to your two communities and the leadership you folks offered in those um if you have further questions there you can ask the principal um parents you can send your cons you, you know your comments to me or your family school superintendent whatever works for you i would thank you for attending tonight and i would wish everybody um a good night thank you